Hey guys, this is Edward Crowther and you're watching Behind the Song for my latest single, California Cruising. The roof was something that really was a spur of the moment, just kind of jamming out in my studio and started to randomly play it and, you know, it had a, a very funky, you know, hard type of groove to it that was very catchy. Um, and naturally, when I when I first heard it, it reminded me of something from the 70s. Uh, it also reminded me a lot of something that maybe a band like Dirty Honey would write, where we're using not overly complex chord structures, but we're, we're creating a sense of groove. And so that's ultimately where the riff started to kind of take root and inspiration from. But it was something that I had completely written mostly on accident. And, you know, I, I think it it stands out on its own just from the power chords that are used, but also just the little motifs that are added throughout um, the main melody. So, yeah, overall though, it, it started to take its shape and, and became something rooted in, you know, early uh, 70s rock and, and kind of focusing on creating something that had a lot of groove to it. So when it comes to writing lyrics, uh, I think usually what I start off with is the, the melody that I want to hear. Um, so for instance, when I was writing California Cruising, I, uh, I knew I wanted the chorus to sound like da 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 And then from that point, you just figure out what what words fit in and what you can do with them to kind of make them unique in their own way and, you know, kind of call back to like the classic bands like Guns N' Roses, Aerosmith, those kind of guys. Well, as I, you know, I just mentioned it, it really wrote itself, but as the opening riff started to kind of take shape, I, I wanted the two guitars and themselves to kind of mirror each other and have a lot of spank and funk to them. Uh, so that's where you get that da 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 that little extra part that I just kind of tried to recreate with my my voice. That really, I think, brought that riff to life. Um, and it, if you listen closely on the single and you're listening to left and right guitar, you can hear them kind of echoing each other and and playing off uh, one another. And so that's exactly how I had envisioned that opening riff. And you know, I wanted it to breathe uh, a lot of that 70s type, you know, rock and roll where there's not a whole lot going on underneath the hood, but it's exactly what it needs to be. You know, it's not too bombastic or over the top, but it's just simple rock and roll, put some power chords behind it, a little bit of, um, you know, embellishment here and there, and, and the song will take care of itself. Uh, and I think that approach and mindset with it is what really helped that opening riff shine and fit the way that it needed to uh, for the song. I think my main influence on this song specifically was uh, Dirty Honey. Uh, specifically this last album they've done, uh, Can't Find the Breaks, it was unbelievable. You know, I, I listened to it like three times the week it was released. Um, but yeah, it's just, it just had that kind of vibe, you know, that Mark LaBelle kind of vibe to it. Um, and yeah, you know, they're just a, they're just a great band that I love listening to and, and getting inspired by, you know? Yeah, well, my, um, my favorite thing about this track is when I had originally sent it to Leo, uh, I already had in my mind like where I wanted like the guitar solos throughout it to go. And I guess I hadn't really communicated that to him. So when he sent the track back to me, it was a completely different arrangement. And at first I was like, oh no, I should have told him that. But the more I listened to it and you know, as we worked together, I was like, man, I really liked the idea he brought to it. So I just thought that, you know, that was, this probably has to be my favorite memory. And I think also to just getting the final recording of it. I mean, it, to me, it's a quintessential rock pop track uh, and it, it really has that sort of commercial appeal but I think also just embodies 
like good soul rock and roll that you know it can be sung like an anthem. Uh, I, I love what he did with the lyrics and you know that was also one of my other favorite memories is just getting those back and again just being blown away by the way he approaches it, his songwriting and, and how he writes things but yeah when he first sent it back to me and the uh the structure of it was like completely different than what i had mapped out for the session um i was like well this is this is very different i didn't think about approaching it this way but i think that's also the beauty of like working with different people and especially someone like Leo who's as talented as he is where you can bring different ideas and, and everyone's not so precious with them and we can you know mold them to, to what we want it to be but yeah I, I really enjoy being able to get the track back and it being a completely different layout that I was not anticipating and it was completely knocking my socks off and it was just it was the right layout it's what the song needed to be and I think it turned out perfectly. So when it comes to the writing style between Edward and I, uh, I usually compare it to uh, Elton John, Bernie Taupin kind of scenario, um, where one of us writes the music and the other one writes the lyrics. Usually it's Edward who handles the instrumentation, whereas I handle the, the lyrics and the, the, uh, the vocal melodies and the harmonies and that kind of stuff. Um, and it's just been so easy writing lyrics to Edward's stuff because he writes incredible riffs, he knows song structure really well, and he knows, you know, how to, you know, he knows how to write a song, you know, not a lot of people know how to write um, really, you know, gripping songs like he does, so I love working with him. Well, yeah, um, you know, working with Leo, I mean, it really is a, a breath of fresh air for me. I've, you know, worked in music almost now, 10 years, and I've written uh, a lot with, with different people. And, you know, him and I just naturally understand one another really well. Uh, we, we both love this type of music that we both work on, and we understand what it embodies and, and how to write it really well. And, uh, you know, we're both very hungry to be successful musicians and I think that collaboration of people who understand the vision who are driven and have the same mindset is what makes working with him so fresh and exciting um, and I think also too I mean we just have a really good dynamic between each other I think you know when you work with other people in a music setting you want to have uh, creative freedom, you know, you got to let the song breathe and you've got to let people express themselves and I think him and I work really well in that sense and that, you know, I can send him a track and say, all right, you know, do your thing and, you know, I can also, from a guitarist perspective, go out and, you know, play my guitar and write the song the way that I'm thinking about it, but yeah, him and I, we understand the vision, we understand this type of music really well, uh, we, we both studied our craft and I think also just being fun to hang out with and, and work together, I think has funneled our creative process to make it better. But yeah, I think the way it's evolved now is, you know, we just kind of send stuff to each other and we just say, you know, go for it. And it just works. You know, I don't have to explain everything to him or vice versa. We just have this unspoken language. And I think as musicians, we kind of all strive to find that at, in our lives when we are working with other people, and it's hard to find, but once you do find that with you know a set of peers that share those same ideas and have that same skill set, it becomes an extremely rewarding uh, project or you know time well spent, if you will. Uh, and I think you know the tracks that him and I have worked on and will probably continue to work on in the future continue to speak volumes on that and really highlight the creativity and just the fact that you know we understand what each other are doing and I think it, it speaks for itself and it makes a, a badass rock and roll track. California Cruisin' has pretty much everything you could ever want in a great rock song. You know you got killer riffs, you got killer vocal lines, killer sound overall, it's just something you want to throw on in your car, crank the volume, and drive into town and raise some hell, you know? Um, and where would I want to see this going in 10 years, this song? Um, 
I hope that in 10 years uh, there will be a kick-ass band playing this in front of a, a massive arena. Not a massive arena, mel multiple massive arenas all around the world. That's where I want this to go.